A uniform conical shell of mass capital M, the mass is distributed along its lateral area, radius capital R and length capital L, length L. Along the central axis, Z axis, is pivoted at a point P as shown in the figure. The semi-vertical angle of the shell is pi over 4. First part, calculate the Z coordinate of the center of mass of the conical shell. The lateral area of the conical shell is square root 2 pi capital R square and sine pi over 4 is equal to cosine pi over 4, that is 1 over square root 2. Part 2. A very slight impulse is given to the conical shell so that it starts falling down. By ignoring the initial change in the speed of the shell after the impulse, find the angular speed of the shell W when it hits, so this is uh, the angular speed here, when it hits the edge of the wall as shown in the uh, figure. The central axis of the shell is in the horizontal position and G is the gravitational acceleration. The moment of inertia of the conical shell about its center of mass is given by alpha capital M capital R square where alpha is a constant. Okay, so let's start with the center of mass calculation in the first part. So first of all, I have a uniform mass distribution, therefore the mass density is capital M divided by square root 2 pi capital R square. So if I choose a mass element, its mass will be, differential mass will be sigma times dA. So uh, my first task is to find this dA. You can see that I have, if I have a radius R, for the circular region inside the uh, conical shell, it's going to have a circumference 2 pi r multiplied by the length along the side of the shell dl. It will give me the area 2 pi r dl. So what is the uh, relationship between this dl, uh, dr and dz? So you can see that if I move a distance dr on the radial axis and move a distance dz on the z-axis, I'm moving a distance dl on the conical, along the length of the conical shell. So therefore this dl is equal to square root of dr square plus dz square. And on the other hand, I have a relationship between R and Z here because of the semi-vertical uh, angle pi over 4. If I'm at a distance Z from the origin uh, and at a distance R from the center, uh, the angle uh, for this right triangle is pi over 4. And therefore, tangent pi over 4 is equal to cosine pi over 4 over sine pi over 4 which is r over z, and that's equal to 1. So this tells me that dr must be equal to dz, and the radius at z is equal to l, which is capital R, must be equal to the length l. So this is z equals 0, I go to z equals l, and I find that uh, I have a radius capital R, because z and r should be equal, r is equal to capital L. So with that, I can write dm. dm is equal to sigma times 2 pi r dl. So it is 2 pi r square root of dr square plus dz square. And because they are the same, this is going to be sigma times 2 pi r uh, this will be 2 dr square, so it's going to be 2 square root 2 pi r dr. Okay, so if I substitute for sigma, capital M divided by square root 2 pi capital R square, this will be multiplied by 2 square root 2 pi r dr. 
So this will give me for uh, dm uh, 2m divided by capital R square R dr because I have the square root 2 pi's cancelling. Okay. Now the location of the center of mass on the z axis, z center of mass, is 1 over the total mass integral z dm. So this is 1 over the total mass integral uh, from 0 to capital R. Remember, z is equal to R. So R dm is 2 capital M R dr divided by capital R squared. So this will give me R squared uh, dr integral, which is R cube over 3. So 2m r cube over 3m r squared. Therefore, the answer is 2r over 3. And since r is equal to L, the center of mass on the z-axis is at a distance 2L over 3 from the uh, bottom. So it is 2L over 3. Okay, so we're basically saying that this is z is equal to 0 here. And this is z equals capital L. Now, the second part. I have a rotation with respect to this point, not the center of mass point. Therefore, I can use the parallel axis theorem. So if this is point P, the moment of inertia for rotations with respect to point P is I center of mass plus MD square, the distance between the two rotation axes, because I have determined that to be 2L over 3, M 2L over 3 squared. So this will be alpha capital M R squared plus 4 over 9 M L squared or R squared. R and L are the same. Now, this cone will have an initial potential energy, M capital M G 2 L over 3. Final potential energy will be 0. Initial kinetic energy is 0 because we're ignoring the speed it has right after the uh, impulse is applied, okay? Ignoring the initial change in speed after the impulse, we have an initial zero kinetic energy. Final kinetic energy will be one over two, moment of inertia, IP, omega, final squared. So uh, if we write the uh, an energy conservation, uh, we have, um, the initial potential energy of the system, mg 2r over 3, must be equal to the final rotational kinetic energy, 1 over 2 i omega squared, so it's alpha plus 4 over 9 mr squared omega squared. And here I have m's cancelling, and one of the R's also disappear. And I find that my omega final must be uh, 4G. Because I have a G here. 4G divided by uh, 3 alpha. 3 alpha plus 4 over 9 r square root. Okay, so here I have written energy conservation. All right. So uh, in this problem, first I had to figure out how to write dm. dm is sigma dA. So for that, uh, I see that it is 2 pi r times dL. It's this lateral area on the shell. 
And the relationship between DL, DR and DZ can be found by considering this uh, right triangle. If I go a distance D, DR, DZ, then I have DL. So that's, uh, and, and the semi-vertical axis angle tells me that R and Z are the same, R equals Z. So with that, I can figure out the center of mass location using 1 over M integral ZDM. So it's 12 over 3. And then in the second part, because I have a rotation with respect to point B, I used parallel axis theorem. So parallel axis theorem was utilized. And this is basically I center of mass plus MD square, where D is the distance between two rotation axes. And for Z equals zero and Z equals Z center of mass, that distance is basically the Z coordinate of the center of mass. Uh, and I note that the initial potential energy is mg's z center of mass. And finally, I have no potential energy because I have the horizontal position, uh, but I have a rotational kinetic energy, one half ip omega square. So this is my omega. It's basically rotating uh, on the zx plane, uh, we can say. And this gives me the final answer for omega.